Rain Ranger to do it as well. It's all in the pool and it's some dandy place. Yeah. So it's very possible. I would love to see that coming out of him. And since they also have Slaughter still in, it could be a nice little pickup there. So a couple options. Also, the IO again is in the pool. I don't think the IO was bad last game at all. A couple of positioning errors by Navi. Obviously, that top push really led to a lot of their downfall. But I think with, you know, I, I don't think it means they can't run it again. But they're going with Dazzle. Yeah, I guess they felt that it was somewhat of a problem. I mean... Probably by the end, having a Lotus Orb as well as a Solar Crest meant that he was going to be a huge nuisance no matter how you approach the fight. So, I can understand it. I mean, the hero is really good. It's good against Ember too. You know, the Heal Bomb bypasses the Flame Guard efficiency and HP. And of course, you have the Weave and all these other tools. The Grave, just one of the best heroes, best support heroes in the game. I'm not sure if they're going to opt for the Winter Wyvern, uh, as I would expect somebody like OG to do here. Dazzle plus Wyvern, Dazzle SF, Dazzle Slaughter, Dazzle Runner. A lot of options for sure. Reserve time. Yeah. So gonna kinda be waiting on that pickup, but for Team Secret, there's obviously I mean, last time they paired Ember Spirit with the Windrunner, they might also see the SF coming through. I imagine that Navi's worried about that too. Uh we are obviously skilled on all, pretty much all of the mid heroes. So, or do you think that here for Team Secret it's actually maybe better for them to pick up something like the Bane? as a support in this first round. Oh, uh, again, a very Pilai die esque hero. It's not what they have to do, but if they want to secure their lanes, I guess they can go for it. I do think they might just pick up Windrunner again, though, if it's available. And uh, we see Art Style on the side of Na'Vi taking quite a long time on his first and second pick. Ooh. Dark Seer looks like it's the choice, and I, I think Wind Ranger's still strong, so... Yeah, I'm a bit surprised. Um, obviously, if the Darkseer doesn't get picked up here, it's probably going to be banned. He's one of the most popular offlaners to ban out. At the same time, it does allow Team Secret to again get the Ember Spirit Windrunner. And the Darkseer, I mean, he has a little bit of lockdown. He needs more. And so Navi still need to make sure their lineup has a way to catch Envy and maybe even the Windrunner early game. I'm almost no. wondering if, um, I know the Night Stalker's banned out, I'm almost wondering if they want to pick something with the Synergy to the, on the Darkseer. That way, you know, where they want to just topple the Ember Spirit in lane. And... There's that Husker ban. The first time they let it through the second game, and lo and behold, Navi did. They went for the grab, and unfortunately they couldn't pull it out, but Secret saying in Game 1 and Game 3, saying no to Huskar. Too annoying, it makes the game too long, dragged out, difficult, what not then. Ancient yeah. permission, the follow-up as a result. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense, and Na'Vi doesn't want to fight into having no healing, especially when Darkseer are always going to be picking up that mech, and then you've got a Dazzle. I'm also wondering for uh, for Secret and Na'Vi, I mean, looking for some way to just Five stop people from remaining. kind of TPing away. I guess Ember Spirit and Windrunner have a lot, but for Dazzle, Darkseer, not Reserved. best. Although we're, we're working in on those bands, and Slaughter is also still here, so... Team Secret, if they can get themselves a Slaughter to boot, that's scary. I feel like Secret pretty much gave up on Slaughter as a whole ever since the Frankfurt Majors. They haven't they haven't touched it like once in a. I think um, with that said, the teams that have been running it against them have found success, and the hero is still finding a lot of success overall. I do think Secret and Navi though, for some reason, they don't seem to like that Slaughter pick very much. Yeah, and it's Seconds funny remaining. because they actually do have a bunch of games on Misery on the Slaughter, I believe. Let me just double check. Yeah, he does have a 70% win rate on that hero. Yeah, well, it's he played just... it exclusively until yeah. he lost that finals in the, the Frankfurt Majors against OG. He played it four games straight and they lost 3-1, to one, so I'm sure that ever since they switched things up. I do think Secret can go for Magnus again here. Oh, as I say that, actually. I yeah. Just... Banter. Again, Magnus banned out. I think, as you said, these teams scrim. They know each other's picks. I mean, the Ursa and the Magnus, not heroes that we see banned a bunch these days. So I think it's clear that these two know each other. I think you would expect from these players or players that have played together a lot. So now it's Navi's turn. They can Ten still pick up the Shadow remaining. Fiend, who somehow made it through to the second round of picks. Not something we often get to see. Mm -hmm. It doesn't seem like Secret paid too much attention to the Shadow Fiend in the series and. Again, Navi only picked Reserve it up once, but time. seeing as how they did lose the last game, um, I do think this game has a better setup for a Shadow Fiend pick in general. I mean, Dazzle is all around one of the best supports for Shadow Fiend because you just grave him up and he can do so many things in that five second guaranteed life. And of course, you have the Darkseer combination with the Vacuum Blink if you ever opt for that option. And it is a decent Shadow Fiend game so far, but 
I'm not too sure if they want to pick it. And there's the combination pick with the Darkster. So they want to play aggressive against the, the safe lane of Secret. Yeah, I do like this as well. Obviously, the Darkseer plus the Spirit Breaker is a great combo. You can surge up the Spirit Breaker, and since Bash does damage based on your move speed, it's going to make it even rougher. I mean, Spirit Breaker coming at you with an Ion Shell, and then having that extra damage from Bash if he surged, it's, it's not fun. Um, or Secret, though. Oh, I hear Scribbling. I never know what that is. Um, For Secret, though, they can just maybe... Pick, pick something strong, try to run the Ember into the docks here, because that might be the best bet here. Yeah, unfortunately for them, they don't have the option to grab the Dazzle anymore. As you said earlier, the Bane is a possibility, and there it is. Navi's so it's, uh, Bane's actually one of the nicest supports against Darks here. Not only because you can just sleep him during the duration of the surge, but the overall harassment early. It, it lets him deny the creeps on the Darks here, it harasses him so strongly. And if you're going up against Spirit Breaker, you definitely need something tanky. It gives that, it gives him that extra bit of tankiness. Yeah, so I mean, clearly a comfort pick, and uh, I'm imagining we're gonna actually see him mid for a while. Seconds. Yeah, for most whatever. probably. He'll probably start there and then rotate himself. It's actually Five quite dirty. Seconds. It's kind of funny because before the buffs to Brain Sap, we always used to see folks pop the Enfeeble, make sure that their mid could get a bunch of that first wave, which just starts you off so well in the mid lane. But now it's all about Bane, just trading hits until he uses that Brain Sap, and we have a Templar oh, Assassin. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it's the first time we'll see this hero in this game. Or in this I'm... series, rather. Um, a pretty nice pick, I would say. I generally don't favor TA versus Ember, because even though TA can always 1-2 to two shot a lot of heroes and 2 shot heroes like Ember Spirit, which are naturally squishy, the way Ember plays is he has a way to move the Refraction Cleavy and kite Templar Assassin. And Templar Assassin's greatest weakness is that it's a hero that's limited to right-clicking, very, very susceptible to kiting. And we have a Wind Ranger and Ember as the first two cores and Undying now with a Tombstone as well. So, despite the fact that the matchup might be nice for a TA or relatively easy in comparison to other heroes against the Wind Ranger, it is still somewhat of a difficult game to pass in. Five seconds remaining. Yeah, I was also interested by this. It's something where uh, I talked to some of these captains after they dropped, um, when we're lucky enough to get interviews after Star Ladder matches, and they always talk about how sometimes you get quote, Templar Assassin, where you kind of forget about her in the draft, and then suddenly she's there, you don't have enough picks to deal with her, you don't have ways to burn through refractions. Ember Spirit, great at dealing with a Templar, Focus Fire burns through refractions, Undying with the zombies coming out deals with refractions, and you just need to carry dust now. I mean... It's not it's not easy, and even though maybe she can deal a bit better early with the Bane harassment, he's just going to knock the refraction, refraction charges off, brain sap her, and keep smacking her. I'm curious to see what the, what the ship pick on the Navi side will be. BL. Running it into an Ember Spirit, always a little bit risky, but otherwise very good against Bane. Kills the Tombstone instantly, and doesn't care too much about the Wind Ranger until she comes up with a surprise Blink Shackle. Okay, Pretty you see nice pick here. You say a little bit risky running it into the Ember Spirit. I think it's almost, I mean, Ember Spirit, I would argue, is a hard counter to PL. It is, um, but PL is one of those heroes with a few different playstyles. You can always just split push and see the alone for the entire duration of the game. And the biggest fact of, uh, the biggest Five counter aspect remaining. coming out of Ember against PL is actually not the cleave. A lot of times, yeah, if you have the illusions in the wrong places, Reserve it'll cleave time. off and possibly kill your teammates as well. But most yeah. of the times, the illusions are stacked on a hero. And PL has multiple different ways of creating illusions, not just the Lance or the Doppel, but the natural mm -hmm. chance of them creating illusions on their own. So it's like, it's just the fact that Ember can walk into a PL's lane. PL, which is arguably one of the strongest uh, lane lane carries in the game, because of the Doppel, you just can't kill this guy and he'll just harass you. But uh, Ember doesn't care about that, because with the shield, he actually out out muscles the PL damage out early. Probably why it's really annoying to play PL against Ember, because you have a scenario where PL sort of can't die early against the Ember, but you can't kill Ember ever with a PL. On the other hand, if the PL does get a better start than the Ember, like you mentioned, the PL might get up that Diffusal before the Battle Fury and a damage item is up, and then suddenly the Phantom Lance is rushing at your heroes, nobody has any mana. Ember Spirit can't actually fight with no mana. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Weird interaction indeed. Again, I, I do favor the Ember for sure. I mean... Most of the time what happens is uh, if they're somewhat similar on farm and PL diffuses the Ember, removes the Flame Guard and everything, Ember just he either sleight of fists all your illusions or just uh, zooms out with his ramp. And it's basically done. Yeah. It just sucks to have heroes that, like, as a hero, you can't kill the enemy no matter what you do. It's just a bad. Most of the time, that's what the whole outpick thing really 
And actually, the matchup is a lot closer than I thought. This patch, apparently, it's uh, six wins for Ember and four wins for PL. So I wasn't expecting it to be so close, but well played. I mean, played. if you're looking for a PL win, this is definitely the game setup to do it. Secret, secret. Oh, uh, as I say that, one of the hardest, oh. oldest counters to PL in the game. game the tie hunter right so he just, just not as good not able to do them as early with changes to him and to the ancients and i feel like i'm really surprised to see him here why is he such a great counter to pl the anchor smash is actually the thing that took him off you know with the ancients i mean ancients got a little bit of buff but at the end of the day it just probably requires one or two more anchor smashes to kill a kill a stack the biggest thing i feel is uh when they change anchor smash damage reduction from all levels now it scales from 45 to 60 which is very very similar to before he got the buffs which started at 40 percent anyway so that that 15 percent actually matters a lot because that 15 percent is a difference between whether the tide hunter takes five damage or 15 damage or not 15 damage five damage Or 10 damage. So we'll do like really, zero really damage. interested to see how this tide hunter goes. I haven't seen one of those in lane in a while. We've got Weeha on the Windrunner, Puppy on the Undying, Miser Misery doing the backstroke on the tide hunter. I wasn't expecting that. I know that taunt exists, but just messed with my mind a bit there. Been so long since we've seen a tide hunter. Envy on the Ember Spirit, and of course Paladai on that Bane. Side of Navi, we do have. Art style playing the Dazzle, signature. Dendi on the Templar Assassin. Soneko on the Spirit Breaker and Axmo again on the Darks here this time. It's apparently it's a rather uh, in back of the throat flemmy Axmo or something. Yeah. yeah. So that's what Media I'm going to try to go with. Phantom, Lesser, Phantom Master on the safe thing here. Yeah, who's in a little bit of uh, the danger zone. It's daytime, so everybody sees each other. They're just kind of looking at each other. Hopefully, no one's going to be taking more than a decay. Weehaw's coming around, hasn't skilled yet. A lot of folks haven't skilled. Pretty common early in Dota, and it looks like DJ Raw is just gonna say, Hey, I didn't want the bottom rune anyway, guys. And he may even be lane trading, deciding that there's no way he wants to play up against an undying, which I think is pretty fair. Yeah, I think so. Uh, no way Navi's trialing can contest Secret's trialing. I think Secret are just gonna try to get the best out of it. Very similar to game one, though. They could crumble if they decide to TP and then not maintain the aggression, but I imagine they would learn from their and decide to do it better this time. Yeah. Now, this will be interesting to see how Misery exactly handles this lane. It is one where while Kraken Shell kind of lets you escape, since it'll purge off, um, slows and so on, it still could be rough here since they have the Phantom Lance and then they can use the Dazzle Slow afterwards if they so choose. But that'll keep, that'll mean uh, they have to get quite a few levels beforehand. And we can see already in the mid lane, Dendi's having the refractions burnt off. Pilot Eyes being a jerk. Oh, and Misery actually walked into the entire creep wave and tanked the three-man heal bomb. Yeah. Oh, you see him so low at the top lane, and this kind of start is actually really, really bad for him. Because Tidehunter is a sustained fighter that wants to lose his life points slowly and regain them slowly through the tango as well. But with that kind of burst onslaught coming in, uh, he's going to be forced to play back quite a bit. Yeah, I'd be really interested to see how Tidehunter's been doing this patch. I know he was picked a few times. I feel like he was picked in Nanyang. No, he was picked in the Majors, famously, with the... Uh, ice, ice, ice on Tidehunter, I feel, but he, I don't know how many times he's been picked, and I'm pretty sure his popularity had gone down significantly since the changes, so. Oh, 18 times, 11 wins, 7 losses, so we'll see if we can make that 19 or 8. And, uh, they have actually rotated Bane up top, Pylidae deciding that he needs to help out this Tidehunter. Make it a 2v2 so they can fight up the PL. Again, PL one of the best laning carries in the game, so with the Dazzle it's only going to be better because it gives him more targets for the for the heal bomb. Yeah, in the meantime, it... bottom lane, uh, it is the Darkseer Spirit Breaker dual lane here. Undying is just so good at fighting up against dual lanes. He's already got four stacks of DK. He's going to man fight Soneko here. Yeah, and Soneko, I mean, what do you do? It's an Undying who's hitting like for now 83 damage per hit. It's not great. Um, 
I don't, I don't think he's got a good way to deal with that. Also in mid lane, Dendi doing a great job of catching up despite the early pressure. He's now out denying Weeha and uh, he's pretty much back up on CS if you include the time that Bane had spent there. So much that it looks like Pilot Dai is headed back middle to help him out. DD this time, so then they really have to watch out. Yeah, but again, he has a couple of refractions that'll eat it. And if he can get some creeps under his tower that way, all manages to pop up the refractions, doesn't eat the DD. It'd be so annoying. Second game, this kind of treatment at middle. It's just so annoying to have Banes coming in, trading, and you know you're not going to win the trade because of the brain sap and his base stats. Yeah. Something else I feel like on this top lane that can be really rough for Misery is they can throw a lance and then of course heal the illusion. Actually, he's trying to go in. He looks like he wants to use that anchor smash, but he has to be careful. The heal has been used. Pops a mango though, and he manages to get the charge forwards for Dijira. He still needs a lot of damage, and yeah, he gives up the chase. Just he has one more lance, but in terms of an executing blow, they'll have to time it nicely with the heal bomb. Otherwise, they're not gonna. Get it. If you saw him on the chase, actually, Dijira, his hero did like 10 damage a hit to the Tide Hunter, the anchor smash as well as the Kraken shell. Yeah. That's why the Tyrants are so good. So, uh, gonna be Dichira topping the net worth chart. Oh, sorry, topping the last hit chart, which will also be the net worth chart since we don't have any kills. And also doing pretty well, Envy on bottom. Despite this being a really rough lane, he's doing great, I would say. And the charge, it might land. He does manage to get the nice same chains chain. onto those two. That was completely luck. Yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah. That was. If he didn't get that chain off, there might have been a oh, second shell on Darks here. Yep. And speaking oh, of which, gosh. he actually goes down. Yeah, I thought Arkmo with the surge away had got it, but instead, uh, the life, the brain and soul rip comes out. That's more than enough to pick him off just because of the amount of units in the area. So, Arkmo going down, and that's going to be a first blood, and this is really helping MB out. He's already not having t as rough of, his, of a time as we expected in that lane. And uh, now, getting a kill to boot. Also, Misery has a lot of CS. I mean, I know it's easier to CS with that... Anchor Smash, but I didn't expect him to be doing so well. What is going on with Puppy? He is in the danger zone, but they can't quite make it connect. And now, here comes Envy. He's trying to give it a go on Seneco. Where is the Brain Tap already being used? They have a Nightmare as well. Searing Chain, oh, slight, Searing Chains this time. Not so lucky, but Pylai died. Five more seconds on his Brain Sap. There's going to be the charge away on Seneco. Now they might be able to turn around on Ak Akmo. But he uses Surge, Envy's coming in, has the Searing Chains, gets them onto Akmo, there's gonna be a Brain Sap, and there's another kill. And Secret looking like they're in a great position. Envy's actually still trying to go for this kill, I'm not sure that they have the damage, and with the charge away, it's gonna be just fine for the Spirit Breaker. Nice two kills for Secret. The, with Puppy getting gone on earlier, he gets out, and he's able to port back to any lane he wants, now with Boots as well as Magic Stick. The ward situation, however, looking like a... Uh... Avia has the better end right now, but that's because Pilot has been so occupied at bottom, trying to win that engagement. And sure enough, he did. Time well spent. Yeah. Um, at the same time, Dendi, now winning the mid lane, firmly. I kind of wasn't expecting him to win this matchup so well, but obviously it is really hard for the Windrunner to harass someone with refractions. I mean, with refraction, it's like, you have like double the Windrunner's damage on the crease. It's like, at one point, you're just not gonna win. You just have to, kind of... Warp it the lane to an extent. Just spam your power shot and get as much CS as possible. Possibly stack the woods. Uh, unless unless there's a gank or something, you're just not going to burn through the refract. Yeah, I'm actually a little surprised it does. Oh, okay, Misery takes another big heal, but he's going to be fine. He already has Arcanes up. I was going to say, initially I was expecting maybe they would need Bane to stack a little bit for Misery since this lane felt like it might be a bit rough, but he's doing just fine, Dendi. He should have Refractions on cooldown, but he's stunned up instead, manages to get the Tombstone and the Refractions off, so Dendi is just gonna wander away in alt style. Oh, someone's getting themselves a big Tombstone bounty. They actually deny it. Well played from Puppy. Yeah, Puppy not willing to give anything back to his former teammate. <laughs> I actually think it's a really important play. I think it's 75 gold at level 1, or oh, it's level 2, so maybe it's 100 now. I think it goes up to 125. Either way, it's actually quite a bit of gold when if you keep giving away those tombstones. And it's just something you don't need to be giving to the mid who's already ahead. We can see that Dendi is doing quite a bit better than the Windrunner. Yeah. Just, just a matter of survival for Dendi right now. There's a charge coming in now because they saw the opportunity with the wind run, but he has an invis rune and then he's gonna drop some harassment, but this is probably Oh, he actually gets out of the invis rune. Now here comes Puppy, he should have tombstone- no, 13 more seconds, so... It feels like- There was no like... kill happening here. Not enough disables, only, only a bit of right-click damage from both. 
It does feel like this game, Saneko, he's having a lot of trouble making the Spirit Breaker work in the same way that he did the Night Stalker. Obviously, they're different heroes, but he's having such a hard time making it like he keeps trying to charge onto envy as well which i feel like is a questionable decision since he can pretty reliably unless you're charging into it through your own creep wave he should be able to get the searing chains on you before the charge hits and he has demonstrated to do so in the past so i think right now he's just doing it for mobility i think he realizes that the navi's lineup don't have potential for kills with a templar assassin as the pl they're very lane centric and very passive to so unless he's unless he's nearby with the dark seer or just pulling as he's about to do now. He's not really got much of a. Yeah. So misery gonna be having a blast up in top lane still doing really well. Um, same number of lost hits. Okay. Well. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently we don't have any matches this patch between Tidehunter and PL. So we'll see if it still works out. It's gonna be a nightmare onto Dendi, but Dendi's bottle is on the courier. Okay. Oh, and I need to go offline quickly. Dun 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 dun. Okay, there we go. Now, there are four heroes for Secret fostering in this mid area. I don't necessarily think it's wasted, but I feel like this is something they tried to do last game really early on when they had the gank that took Dendi's stacks as well. But I'm not quite sure how good it is again, because I do feel like Envy can benefit a lot from just farming. So Nako's going in on top on Misery. Yeah, there is a Ravage ready, but he just actually ends up poking him and getting no extra damage. DJ Rod didn't have the mana for a Lance, and with no mangoes left over, he just gets it now. But he couldn't throw that out. I think if he could throw that out on Misery, of course, you can get a kill. You can throw the heal bomb out afterwards onto the illusion. I'll die in position. Yeah. Yeah, uh, was it somewhat of a hard task. It's a kind of really weird game. I was expecting with a Spirit Breaker for it to be more action packed. And also with the Tide Hunter, I feel like it's really advantageous for you as the Tide Hunter to blow your ultimate early because you're probably not getting a five man Ravage off in the first 10 minutes of the game. Why not just use it the moment you get it? But Misery may just not see any opportunities to get kills with it. I mean, he's going up against the Dazzle Heal. It's somewhat hard to walk into them because of the heal bomb potential. And he didn't have that much lane sustain. So he's going to get a little bit more now with the Ring of Re the in of a mango. Um, I think he's actually gonna be looking to sit around base. No, I thought he was gonna sit around base to finish Tetris, but he's gonna walk out for the time being. And again, it was probably an issue of sustain as well as the fact that uh, his only playmaking partner, the Ember Spirit early on, was just very content at bottom lane. And as you can see, the result, Envy top of the net, uh, top of the CS board, pretty much top of the net worth board as well. Almost yeah. got his spots. Now I do say, I have to say I do like this. We can see Misery, he's coming in bottom. While, again, Doxia not the easiest to kill, it's suddenly something. And Weehaw taking a meld strike, finally pops that window and Dendi's gonna wander away, but now gonna just pound a little bit into Puppy as well. So Dendi really beating the pants off this window, and what you like to see. And now Achmo in this bottom lane. Uh, might, maybe gonna take a Searing Chains to the face, there he goes, the Surge has been used, are we gonna see the Ravage? I don't think they even need it, but they should use it for funsies. No, actually, Akmo, he'll burn down. So, not gonna be seeing Misery using that, and at the same time, up in top, we have TP rotations, because Dicha Ra and Oddstyle doing good work on damaging up this tower. Nice of Envy to rotate here, he's got bots and 100 gold, and when he has the Ember Shield, he's gonna be able to clear out the creep wave without Dicha Ra's response as well, so in the meantime, because this shield is on cooldown, Dijara is going to try to... Yeah. All in all, it's a pretty even game. There's about a 1,000 gold lead coming out for Team Secret, but that's something that one team fight can really turn around. And since Dendi's farming so well, unfortunately, the Ancients have now been blocked out, so he's not going to be able to fall back on that. We have a Fiend's Grave coming out onto Dijara. He, of course, will have Doppelganger the moment this ends. Instead, the Shallow Grave comes out. He's also invisible. He's going to doppel to the low ground, but here comes Envy. He wants that. The Ravage comes out. They managed to catch up Dijara. Now Saneko, he's caught in a bad position. Shackle latches on the dead body, and that's going to be it, but Envy, he's looking for more. They've got an odd style. Envy with the shackles. Power shot to finish him off. Okay, Envy is seriously lucky. He again got a shackle in... There were other creeps around that could have taken that. Or of the Envy spirit. He's already got his bots at 11 minutes much earlier than before, and what a way to start the game with 0-6 in favor of Secret. Things are, things are aligning for them right now. 
Yeah, a much better start than in game one and certainly more explosive than in game two as well. And they're starting to pull ahead. I really like that first usage of the Ravage. They're coming back in though. There's gonna be a charge through all of them. Envy not able to stop at this time. Here comes DJ Ra as well. He's got Lances of Plenty. The heal bomb has already come out now. Puppy, he does have a tombstone in 10 seconds, but I don't know if he's gonna live that long. He's a very tanky hero, but they have a lot of stuff going on him. And one Lance will finish the deal. So we'll be seeing MB off to the side, just efficiency farming, gonna actually give it over to Misery while he probably pops home to pick up those shoes and get healed up some more. Then he does farm up mid and Weeha in the bottom lane, both cores farming up. I'm glad both heroes left their lanes, I mean, Weeha was top just now. Damn, Dendi at mid. Is under attack. Yeah, he is receiving the end of a bit of a gank. Now, he will have refractions up in six seconds, but uh, they've got about three there. There's gonna be the weave coming out. He gets shackled, actually. They dropped the wall as well, and now Dendi, he's just trying to run away. Can his team save him? The wall not seeming to zone, and I think zombies may end up killing him, but with the meld, he gets away. We've got a fiends group on the Sinego on the other side. He goes down. Now, Axmo has to wander away. It was a really nice wall, but it wasn't enough. That should have shackled, I think, but odd style. Can he get himself away? He doesn't have shallow grave. He throws up the heal one more auto attack will do it and Navi suddenly it's one and eight and they are very much falling behind Dyer's top tower is under attack. looks like mid tower is going to go in favor of secret as well I mean the Templar assassin cannot hold this right now and they really need the PL PL is actually coming in from the side he's picked up the threats he's got 1k gold and maybe he'll Ooh. be able to make yeah, they are forced to kind of pull to somewhere near this wall. Here comes DJ Raw. He's going to throw out the lance onto Misery. Misery doesn't have that ult for another 10 seconds or so. And Dendi, they're transferring the nightmare off of him. He does have a little bit of refractions, but another beautiful shackle shock. Seneko taking a lot of damage. And again, will we be seeing him go down? The Shallow Grave coming out arguably a bit early, but he should be down anyway. Searing oh, Chain stops goodness. the TP. He's going to fall. Tombstone at the ready. And it's looking disastrous again for Navi. This shackle doesn't latch out. Axmo trying to get away. The zombies, of course, are slowing him up. Slide of Fist chains doesn't latch from envy either and that should be the end of the engagement as folks decide to back on out oh that uh, that second sled of uh, fist and pain there uh, the ancients i think that was a ping related thing because his sled of fist was extremely short um yeah. slide on soneko when he was tping out very lucky again a lot of different targets that the the chain could have gone on but unfortunately for the side of navi they haven't been getting the better end of that luck so far or that dice roll rather Additionally, and, Navi tried to take a fight there with the Ravage down, and it just didn't work. Yeah, they they can't they can't break Secret's line of five v five. Their heroes just are not strong enough. The only thing Navi can do with the PL pick, I thought the philosophy was to split push and just ignore the fight. And I, again, I think they should just off that. They cannot fight into Secret Ravage or no Ravage. It's just it's just not happening this game. Yeah. And while Dendi's doing a good job of topping the net worth chart, we're almost 3,000 net worth behind on Navi, 3,000 experience as well. The experience almost more worrisome because when we take a look around, you've got heroes like Dazzle and Seneko's not even level 6. Dazzle just hit his 6 versus Bane is 7 and Dying is 6. I mean, Flesh Golem, often something that's not talked about, but it's a hugely powerful ult, especially in these engagements. Definitely amping up everybody's damage. Yeah. Especially with heroes like Ember and Wind Ranger, and just get in there in the middle of the fray and dish out all their spells. And Speaking it feels of the Wind like Ranger these are... again, Weeha's shackles have been so on point. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons why you really have to fear this guy's Wind Ranger play. Yeah, it does feel like we've talked about it before. Shackle always, you know, people have seen the shackles that land, which maybe shouldn't, but Weeha are doing a great job of it, and they should be able to get themselves an early Roshan, even with folks knowing about it. They've got a good amount of armor reduction coming out, and of course, yeah, looking like they're gonna be getting themselves an early one. So, of course, Weeha also has a DD. Let's, let's not forget about those luck runes. So, not sure that they can contest, and as you said, maybe you just try to sit back and get DJ Ross and farm. It is true, I think, that if the Phantom Lancer can pick himself up, he is a scary force. Is under attack. However, at this rate, I think Envy's gonna come online before the PL, and it's always something he has to watch out, watch out for. Again, the Ember Spirit skills so nicely against Phantom Lancer in general. Yeah, I... Oh, and he's oh no, we have a Fiend's Grip I hear on DJ Raw. He's got the Shallow Grip, but with the Shackle, he's going down. And goodbye. They actually missed the power shot, but, you know, he casually getting those Searing Chains off, and he gets another kill. I mean, we saw Navi perform so well in Game 1 and 2, and this last one, unfortunately, looking to be a bit of a stomp. So far, so far, it definitely does. I mean, this this TA versus Rune Ranger at mid, again, I really doubted the potential. Templar Assassin against Wind Ranger. You need so many items to fight the Wind Ranger. 
It's actually so annoying. You can't burst her down ever with, with the wind run. And you need the blink to usually get on top, and even then, uh, I might just get shackled and turned on. So, just too many tools that they need this game to be able to break secret, and so far, they have none of it. Yeah, and it doesn't look like they have any good sort of high ground defense either. I mean, what are you going to do? Throw launches at the creep wave? Your, your options are really bad for this lineup of Na'Vi. So, MV coming in now. Let's see if he can get off another one of those slider fist searing chains that we all love. He gets it, of course, on art style again. Puppy also going to do a little bit of follow-up. They have the damage to hold this, I think, and they're doing a good job of trying to trade up top. Now, a nice thing about pushing high ground in to, or for Na'Vi... Uh, saving their high ground, of course, is it does make the wall vacuum combo a little bit easier for them to land. Secret, looking pretty dominant in still so far. They smoke, look, it looks like they want to rotate top. I don't think Axmo should get picked off by this one. I mean, there's Dendi here in the woods as well, so maybe he feels a little bit comfortable, but Heroes just went completely missing. And looks like no. he is going to get picked off. Oh no, Searing Chains comes out, Dendi TPing away. Dendi manages to get up, but goodbye on the Axmo. Or an Akmo, and yeah, he still hasn't even finished his mech. I mean, his his lane wasn't great. Okay, there, it just comes out. He finishes the mech, but he is behind. It's feeling like all of these heroes on Na'Vi are behind, and they're in no position ready to fight. And not to mention, they've been losing these fights before the Ravage is even coming out. I mean, Misery yeah. hasn't even kind of showed his true power. He's casually got up a mech. He's going to have a Blink Dagger soon. I don't yeah. know how they hold their high ground. It's just the the pick oh. itself was so complimentary. Oh, that thought in mid, yeah, we have some action. We have the nightmare onto Art Style. They're just desperately trying to get this tier one tower. Now we've got the fiends grip onto Art Style as well, and they're not even going for the tower here. I think. I feel like Na'Vi, they definitely wanted to get out, make sure they weren't in danger, but they just lost a tower in bottom. They get the mid tower denied. At least that's something. But they also lose Art Style, and they're just hemorrhaging right now. Yeah, they're they're really bleeding hard, and again, it's uh, it has a lot to do with this tight under fifth. Something that can fight up against the PL Dazzle alone, against such good laning heroes. Still scale. Uh, now that he has the mech, he's actually able to walk into them non-stop. And whatever onslaught of damage that Na'Vi can throw at him, he'll be able to burn it back with the, or bring it back with the mech. And always get off a decent Ravage as a result. The 5-man coming out of secret, oh. Na'Vi cannot fight this. Steering chain, slide of fist, and he gets it again. He's actually backing up, but there is a DD on Weeha, and he has his Aghanim Scepter up, so suddenly his damage output, quite scary. And they may just high ground here. We could be seeing, after such wonderful long games, a 25-minute rack or something coming out. Weeha pops that DD, use that ult, and now let's see what Na'Vi can do. They've already popped the weave on some of those heroes. Seneko D wards their high ground ward, but Envy, he just blinks in. He gets off the slide of fist. He actually takes a lot of damage. Envy needs to back all the way on out. They use the mech with Misery. He still hasn't popped that ult. A wall vacuum but the wall a little bit too late and now Dijeral he's making a lot of illusions but again we can see Misery just doing quick work on them here comes Envy there's gonna be the Ravage hitting everyone Alt style he gets healed up himself as well but they've already lost the Phantom Lanza and that was the majority of their damage the Neko tries to get off that Nether Strike but it's too late Envy he remnants away there's a charge through the middle we are taking quite a bit of damage finally the Nether Strike comes out onto him and Axmo trying to do this physical damage but Dendi he can't do anything else he has no more refractions and Axmo he's gonna be falling and this is gonna be a 20 minute Rax in favor of Secret they didn't lose anybody in that engagement mm. really looks like secrets back for the time being but again just no way clear no real tools to fight off this five man strong heavy five man coming with the undying as well as that under on the front lines so much aggression and so much damage coming out on the side of secret and looks like they want to continue their efforts to mid i mean i don't think they have any reason that they need to stop with this dog seer not only being on the deck but the fact that he doesn't have the wall vacuum combo even after he's up what's scary for secret and they're taking these engagements with or without the ravage tombstone dropped it's looking like a quick loss for navi their lineup just did not come online and fast enough Oh, it's gonna be a shackle onto Art Style. They have the damage, and there's gonna be no time for that shallow grave. He's waiting for it. He gets the cost. They're backing out on secret. They caught Di Girardo with the Fiends group. Can anybody save him? They're trying to do some work onto Pile I Die. It looks like this may be the exit of secret. Although MV, he's just recharging. He may end up coming back in. A shackle doesn't manage to latch. A charge through really nice onto Weeha, and they vacuum people back into it as well. Pile I Die taking a lot of damage from Dendi. Can they finish him off? But here comes Envy with the Searing Chains. Misery ready to get back up in their faces, and Pile I Die 
Sky is still so low. He finally burns out to Akmo's Ion Shell, but now Dendi has to go into the meld. Realizes there's a sentry down seeing him. He just needs to do damage to someone. And finally, the wall is back up. They take out the raid boss that is Envy, and they're still trying to fight. Of course, they have creeps coming into the base in the bottom lane as well. Misery should maybe go down here. Oh, they finally pick him off. <laughs> Big heal bomb. Weeha also on the sidelines, but has that wind run available anytime she wants it. Might not be able to use it if they can hold her in place. There she goes, wind running away. They do have another charge in six seconds. She blinks oh, up over because the courier ad ad delivers that. And looks like with that, she'll be out. T Dendi, at least, finding something here. So a big turnaround for Na'Vi, but we're going to see. There's still probably 10,000 net worth behind overall. And uh, we are just coming back in. Get the shackle onto Dendi. Shallow Grave comes out in time. There's also Tombstone down. Dendi needs to get rid of these zombies. And it looks like they'll be fine, but it probably means that Shaklo actually... Uh, sorry, Shine Shineko managing to get out there. And Dendi, he uh, stops his TP? doesn't matter. I think it means that Alt is going to be in a lot of trouble. The Shackle Shot doesn't manage to hit Dendi, turning around, doing a lot of damage. And Weeha, he actually used the Wind Run to catch up there. A big kill for Dendi, getting that Mega Kill Streak coming out. And now Pilot Die, he's in the danger zone. They do have Refractions up for a little bit longer. Brain Sap, not going to do enough oh, work. No, Can they catch bye. Puppy as well? Oh, goodness, Seneko. He's going hard. He's seeing if he can lock down Puppy. He has another strike in five seconds. He gets the bash, but Dendi, I think, calling him back, saying, we won't go for this one. We've already won enough. And out of nowhere, Dendi getting a bunch of kills. Yeah. Pi actually had a goal set. But... So he completely forgot the fact that he had a goal set. But... He would have survived been... that 100% if he clicked goal set. But... Yeah. It is what it is. Nambi's yeah. coming in hard now, I guess. No. He, he just oh, remnants out. Dyer's this is... Tower is under attack. A lot of action. Yeah. The middle lane push there. And again, Secret looks like they, they lost a couple kills, but I imagine when they gather properly, take a moment to breathe and let MB actually finish up his Battle Fury. Uh, I'm not even mm -hmm. sure if they'll need it, honestly. If, if they do opt for that option, they certainly take the push with the Stroke Force afterwards. In the meantime, no. Dendi is in the highest net worth now. He's got a BKB yeah. completed. And again, I think a lot of that has to do with the follow-up at the end there. If Pilot Dead didn't die, he might have been able to kill Dendi. Um, Unless Navi responded fast enough, and it looked like with the Hunter there, there was a chance, or not Hunter, but I think it was actually die. There might yeah. have been a chance with the urn as well, but again, killed her. On the other hand, Secret with that push gold, because you get a lot of gold from destroying a Rax and a tier, two tier threes. Tidehunter has finished up Guardian Greaves, so this team getting harder and harder to kill despite the minus armor coming out of Navi. Puppy, as you said, urn. Vlad, he's also got a casual medallion to help out his team. And we can see that Bane also, I think, is working towards an Aghanim Scepter. With the point booster, I, I don't see too many other options. Don't know about that one, honestly. I think he it could have just gotten like a glimmer keep or something. Yeah, it does mean that it's really hard for people to attack him without also having BKBs active and ways to stun. And uh, Dendi is actually just outside this sentry. He is living life on the in the danger zone, I believe. So it would have been, um, been nice to actually spot him out with that sentry. It would have been pretty pretty interesting to see how Dendi reacts. He didn't have TP up, but he had a BKB, so he starts running away, he gets gripped. In the end, he doesn't get spotted out and. So Kill himself, therefore, they should be now, at that one. Dazzle's picked up a gem. This does mean that suddenly Navi have a lot of map vision, uh, which is really great for them, and they've dewarded a lot of secrets wards in their jungle and so on. At the same time, when we talk about hero scaling, I'm really worried for Navi. I would agree that heroes like Undying and Bane, or oh, Undying maybe doesn't scale as well, Bane, since he always disables at least one hero, I think that's fantastic. And will this smoke and glatch? Oh goodness, Dendi. There's going to be sentries dropped? No, do they not have any? Oh. Okay, well, Dendi no just has to... Yeah, they have no detection. Dendi, unfortunately, is stuck here forever since he also doesn't have a blink. So they're just going to fly something out. Misery just going to splash, be splishy splashy. Can Dendi get his team up here in time? Obviously, the charge is coming out. They're working away on Dendi. They're reducing his damage. There's going to be a weave, but Secret says, we don't care. We're going to fight into you. We don't mind. We got the Ravage. We got the blink. We got everything. Dendi, he pops that BKB. He's giving it a go. Pilot Dyer remembers to go step and immediately the Fiend Grip turn around. Weeha has blown up all style. They've also managed to use the Ravage. The wall is down, but they needed to pull people through. It, and it's not looking like it's enough. Dendi now fighting without refractions. He'll have them up in four, but he has to back out until then. Tombstone has been taken down by Dichiral at the same time as there's a charge onto Misery. Dendi, he's using the Meld Strike as best he can, but it looks like he's going to fall. Finally going down to that Soul Rip. Dichiral using as much as he can out of his illusions, but it looks like he's in a bad spot as well. And it may be a five-man team wipe if Dichiral can't get something out of this. And he goes down. Yep. Yeah. 
Nice Ravage coming in by Misery was able to finish up the Darkseer combo. And of course the, the kill on the art style early on with the with the flank from the side Fiha is really nicely done. Again, yeah. Navi they just they just don't have the tools to five man up against Secret and what they try to do in saving Dendi there was actually just a nice bait planted by Secret because as long as Dendi stayed there, Secret was intent on staying as well. Yeah. But they knew if the fight happened in that exact location, they were gonna come up no matter what. Yeah. Now we're going to be seeing them walking in on the racks for Secret. Let's see what they can do. The shackle oh, latches on the Saneko. He gets shallow graved up. Can there be any sort of follow up alts down now being worked on on by Envy? They actually managed to get Saneko out, so they'll have a charge for later days. But again, a lot of their damage deal is on the sidelines for another few seconds, especially Dendi. They do manage to glyph it. Weeha, of course, does have that ult. Can they stop him? They're throwing out the charge. Misery, of course, doesn't have that ult since he already used it. There's going to be the blink away. They're throwing out Lancers onto Pilot. Die. They go for the nether strike. It's gonna hit on misery. Pilai Dai manages to nightmare himself up. He's still taking a lot of damage with the vacuum back. I think they're doing it, but they have to still deal with this tombstone. And in comes Envy doing a lot of damage. DTR trying to work on the tombstone while Weeha still picking away at people. He wants to catch out Axmo, but he takes a big melt strike to the face. And Envy, he's working in on the back lines. He picks off Axmo with that uh, steering chain. Now, Puppy, he's probably gonna fall here. Takes a lance to the face. At the same time, Envy has just TP'd away. So while it's definitely a two for one, again, they lose Axmo, who had the wall vacuum combo at the ready and he's just not able to make that latch and we can see that Navi is falling further and further behind even if they take a favorable engagement if they can catch out Weeha here this will be huge the shackle goes out onto Saneko it doesn't quite latch he still has no nether strike and now with Envy coming in as well is Denti gonna try for the Roshan they'd have to kill off Envy first I think he's gonna throw out a remnant and there's gonna be the charge away I think that has to be the end of the engagement it's really risky for Navi here Oh, and Envy's going straight for art style. He doesn't have a TP. Yeah, it looks like he's going to probably take a slight fist, and there we see it go down. So, not a, not too great for the lineup of Navi, especially as Envy just remnants away. I mean, we haven't talked about it too much, but beyond this Spirit Breaker with the charge and with the Nether Strike, they again tried to pick themselves a very disable light lineup, and it's really not working out. Product of not doing as well as they wanted to in the early game. Again, uh, they did a lot of work on the side of Secret at bottom lane in the initial stages. The Undying oh. and Ember getting some kills that I'm not too sure if they should have. Saneko going. Yeah, Saneko taking a lot of damage at top. He keeps trying to use the Nether Strike. He finally gets it off. He actually charges through the creeps, but one slide of fist is going to be more than enough. And MV has picked him off. Windrunner has the Aegis again. And I mean, if it's anything like last time, this is another easy set of racks for Secret. Should be. Fortunately for Dendi, he doesn't have anything close to his MKB. Probably really needs to. He's he's got a DD and he's got a BKB. Probably the best tools he's gonna have for this fight. And I guess you can say he has buyback as well. Although I'm not sure how much that matters. What didn't? What do Navi need to get back in this? Do you think there's any way? Do you think it's all just in Secret's hands to make a mistake? Oh my gosh, misery I, doing I the backstroke. I think it's Secret's hands to make a mistake for sure. There's Tide Hunters coming in with 2k life points. There's an Aegis. It's so many things to fight. Okay, we're going to be seeing the beginning of the fight. Dendi has popped his BKB. He's working in a more beautiful wall vacuum. The wall a little bit late, but there's going to be a nice charge through. Can they pick up Misery before he pops that ult? No, they don't quite manage to get him. And Envy, he is still just causing a lot of problems. And Echo goes down on the back lines. Envy, oh, he does so much damage. And there goes with the ult coming out of Misery. It's going to be a beautiful ravage. Dendi caught out as well. Doesn't matter that he has a DD because he is dead. The buyback from Zaneko. Dendi as well. But those are the only two buybacks on the team. And we can see, unless they've got some magic up their sleeve, I don't know how these two take it. I think the only saving grace is that this tier 2 is still alive. But Secret looking in dominant position to end this game. And honestly, that was pretty much the best fight that Navi could have asked for. Now Denny's gonna get caught up. No BKB yeah. and he's probably... Oh gosh, and they have a gem. That's it, I think, unfortunately. That may be the GG and they call it. Again, it's just the... Uh, play this game like Secret would play this game normally. They they did really well in their lanes, uh, even Misery on the safe lane alone against the Dazzle as well as the PL. Did a lot of work. This is the result you have with Secret coming back in full force. Maybe they're back. Yeah. So, either way, a really great showing by both of these teams. They definitely brought us really exciting 